As we enter a new century, there are approximately 500,000 hectares of second growth forests in BC that are between 40 and 120 years old with merchantable timber. The prevailing approach of government and big industry to these forests is to clear cut them and replant. The Sayward Forest on Vancouver Island near Campbell River is approximately 280,000 acres in size. A unique combination of circumstances has created the most intensely managed second growth forest in BC. Aggressive clear-cut logging and some of the biggest forest fires in the history of the province destroyed all of the trees in a relatively short time in the 20s and 30s. Along came the Second World War and the government found themselves with a labor force of conscientious objectors. Some of them were put to work replanting the Sayward Forest, planting trees as narrow as six feet by six feet spacing. Today, the Sayward is an extremely dense second growth forest between 50 and 60 years old on Crown land. In the early 80s, the local Ministry of Forest started a commercial thinning program with some unusual criteria for logging contractors. Bob Woods has been involved in the commercial thinning in second growth forests since the mid 70s and has been working in the Sayward since 1980. He has been instrumental in developing and training crews in innovative low impact logging systems for commercial thinning in a second growth forest. The Ministry of Forest was aiming for 1 to 1.5% 1 site degradation from skidding the logs. This has been accomplished with small equipment that only requires narrow access trails. The trails are 2.5 meters wide and 80 meters apart, following the gently rolling landscape. Stumps on the trails are cut at ground level rather than being removed. Slash and brush is piled on the trails to minimize the impact of the equipment. Here's a stump that we've cut off nice and flush. I'm going to leave the root system here instead of making, digging it out, making a big hole. And then, then the trees, both sides of the road, the trees are fell on here and it's covered with limbs. You're seeing a picture now of limbs that have had probably 140 loads hauled over them. So they do wear down, yeah, but it, it, it makes a good mat for foraging on. This, and our foraging trails are two and a half meters wide. They're fairly narrow. We don't have to open up the stand of timber and make big openings for wind throw and stuff. So it works fairly good. Small streams and creeks can be crossed with portable ramps, again because of small equipment. Falling in a second growth forest requires some special skills. The canopy is thick and the fallers have to fall in the direction of the trail so that the trees come straight out and they have to avoid hitting other trees. The contractor is penalized for damage to trees that are left standing in the forest. The trees are bucked into four and six meter lengths, which means they are easier to move around the remaining standing trees. Another factor reducing the need for wide access trails with wide turns. Once on the ground, the special equipment comes into play. This excavating machine has been modified. It is a multi-task, multi-purpose machine that is the workhorse of the operation. It's used for building roads, clearing debris, yarding logs out of the bush, cleaning ditches and streams, and stump removal. The tower on top is Bob Wood's own design and modification. It functions as a yarder, pulling the felled timber into the access trail with a special feature that allows it to be operated by one man. The operator goes into the bush and attaches his choker cables to the logs. Three cables, six logs maximum. When he's ready, he operates the cable pulling system with a remote control radio. This allows him to walk with the logs into the yarder and ensure there is no scarring of other trees or excessive scouring of the forest floor. If the operator falls, the machine stops as soon as his finger comes off the remote control button.
Once the logs are piled by the trail, the other piece of special equipment comes into play. This is the loader. Its low pressure, wide tires have very little impact on the forest floor. It's also designed to be very easy to maneuver and capable of a short turning radius. Once out on the main access, the logs are transferred onto special bunks that can carry 15 cubic meters. These bunks are another Bob Woods innovation and they fit onto trucks that normally haul waste disposal containers. The trucking contractor can haul at his convenience when the trucks would normally be idle. With this system, a crew of three can extract 40 cubic meters a day. Small by industrial standards, but because there is virtually no road construction, road reclamation or silviculture costs, the crew and contractor are able to make a decent wage comparable to working for a big company in a clear-cut operation. The key to making money with this small timber is bucking the logs into shorter lengths, which allows the high-quality components to be graded and scaled. So it's quite possible this 15-inch log will give us a C grade, and we could get um, $90 a meter for it today. If we send it out on the as a 36-footer, and it drops down to 12-inch top, it would be a gang all the way. And a gang right now is worth about uh, $55 a cubic meter. So we've another, and we do it for that reason, and we do it for when we're yarding in the bush, it's so much easier to get a short log out of the bush than trying to turn a log that goes down the wrong way. Bob used to be able to sell these short logs to mills in Campbell River. Mysteriously, that market has dried up. The only buyer he has at this time is a plywood mill 70 kilometers south in Nanaimo. Because the priority is to minimize site degradation, the contractors have to use a different type of system to extract the logs in the winter when the ground is wet. High lead systems are nothing new. They make it possible for the crews to get the logs out to the road with minimal impact on the forest floor. This machine is bigger than the one Woods has used in the past, much bigger than is needed for this small timber, but the concept is the same. The Forest Service have what they call uh, seasonal restrictions on ground-based equipment, like horses and skaters or forwarders, because of the compaction and the mud you make. So we switch over to the high lead then and go and use the high lead system then and part the other equipment. Yeah, in the wintertime. Wintertime, yeah. We finished here on May the 15th. We had to be off the road by May the 15th. So we worked from oh, about the middle of January to the 15th of May here. But our skyline roads are about 35 meters apart. As I say, we finished this on May the 15th and we're just looking at it now and it's already greening up. It's looking pretty good. To give it another, and this time next year, and you'll never know where we've even been in here. So, and, you know, there's very little soil disturbance. This area is a great example of the benefits of commercial thinning in a second growth forest. The area on the right was thinned by Bob Woods in 1980. The area on the left has been left alone. The trees in the area that was thinned are bigger and the stand generally healthier. The understory growth in general is healthier and bigger partly because the canopy was opened up by thinning allowing more light and moisture into the forest floor. As well, there are fewer snags in the stand that was thinned. The area that was left alone is very dense and full of snags. You want some snags for woodpecker and insect habitat, but not too many. We left around uh, 250 stems to the hectare here. It was probably as high as 450, 500 stems when we started here. So the um, Good value in the stems are left here now in the last 20 years, so it looks, looks like it's working. This area was planted in 1938. Bob Woods thinned it in 1980. Now, 20 years later, the trees in the thin forest are putting on their new volume onto fewer but faster growing trees. 
Using a selection system of cutting only the annual growth, an eco-forester can extract some timber volume and value while at the same time allowing the forest to continue to grow back to a natural state.